Hi, this is Ushio, and welcome back to Angels with Scaly Wings. In the last part, Remy had a bit of a heart-to-heart, -heart, and it seemed like he was processing some stuff, and I'm not sure what he's going to do about it. It seems like he came to a decision to me, and I think it might be a little bit on the drastic side. We shall find out. It seems like it's the middle of the night. It wasn't long, however, before I woke up again. Yo, what's up? Are you awake? Yeah. I'm awake now. I'm sorry for waking you up at this time. I heard the rain stopped her a bit, so I wanted to ask you something important. Why? You know that we're going to have a busy day tomorrow, so we should get as much sleep as we can. I know. It's just that I've got something planned for quite some time now, and I feel that now would be the best time to do that little something. What have you got planned? Maybe this wasn't the best time after all. Uh... No, it's fine. It's no problem. Are you sure? I wouldn't want to be the reason that you aren't able to stay awake tomorrow. Well, there's not really any point in going back to sleep now. Besides, you made me curious with what you've got planned. I'm sure that you'll enjoy it as much as I will. I do think that you still need to get prepared, though. Okay, agreed. I switched from my nightwear to my regular clothing while Roby waited outside my room. Soon... I was ready for whatever Remy had planned at such an odd hour. Okay, I'm ready. What have you got in store? Well, I figured that maybe we should explore the landscape together. You still need to do your job as ambassador and show me around the environment, after all. Don't you think it's a bit dangerous to go travelling now? What if the storm suddenly starts again, or if one of us gets injured? That's true, however, I feel that this is the best time that we have. Especially if Logan is constantly going to keep us busy. Besides, I always like the rain at night. So, he's still willing to go? Okay, sounds like a fun time to me. In that case, let's go outside then. We'll go for a walk. Me and Remy went into the cold, yet it did ignite. The streets were still wet from the ongoing storm, yet it seemed that nothing had been damaged too seriously. We roamed around the city for a while, until we arrived at one of the city gates. Before we go, I want to ask you something, Remy. What's up? Does anybody else know that we're going to be gone? Well, I considered inviting Logan and Martin, but ultimately decided that this outing should be only for the two of us. I hope you don't mind. Only live once, YOLO. Uh, should have let them know. I don't think you should do that next time. Hmm. Well, you only live once. It's all good. Let's go for it. What are you implying? Let's just say that I'm happy that it's the both of us. I'm as well. I think it's only for the better if Logan and Martin didn't know about this. Now that I think about it, how are we even going to get around? The wet sand is going to make travelling much harder for us. I realise that. That's why I want you to ride on my back while I'm flying around. Are you sure you can support me with that? Well, all this flying around recently may be a bit stronger. I should be able to carry you around, at least for a short while. I don't think that's the best option for you. Please, I insist. There really isn't any way to convince you, is there? Okay. I'll lower myself so that it'll be easier for you to get on. Just try not to get in the way of my wings too much, though. I kind of need them after all. Remy lowered his body for me to climb onto his back. I tried to make it not too uncomfortable for Remy, but I could see from his expressions that he felt otherwise. Hey, I told you to watch out for my wings. Sorry. After some trouble, I finally got on Remy's back in a way that he was comfortable enough for flight. Okay, this is a surprise. What's that? Wait, don't tell me that I'm overweight. It's quite the opposite. You're actually much lighter than I thought you'd be. Um, thanks. In any case, hold on to my neck while I'm flying. It'd be quite bad if you happened to fall off mid-flight, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I'll make sure to hold on tight. So, you ready? Born ready. Well, I've been ready ever since you woke me up. Let's go. Alright, let's, let's go. Let's go. Alright, prepare yourself. Remy started to gain a faster pace and with the heavy beating of his wings took off to the skies. Soon, we were high above the city with miles of landscape ahead of us. Holding on to Remy's neck, I could feel the cool night breeze flowing through my hair. It's amazing. 
I'm really glad you're enjoying this. To be honest, I was kind of nervous whether you would like flying around. Well, let's just say that I'm pleasantly surprised by how exciting it feels. We should definitely do this again sometime. Only if time allows it. So we're going on a, a fly around town. I looked around, seeing the city in ways I haven't seen since the solar flare. A wave of nostalgia hit over me, remembering the days where we didn't have to struggle for survival. I also saw the endless desert, wondering how we managed to come so far with so little. So, where'd you like to go first? I think I'd like to stay in the sky for a bit longer. Well, in that case I'd be... Suddenly, I felt a drop of rain hitting my shoulder. Uh oh. And here I hoped that we'd have a little bit more time. Maybe we don't have to return to the city yet. There should be a cave nearby that we could take shelter in. I think I saw a cave around here somewhere when I was looking for you. I'll take you straight to it, if you can give me some general directions. Okay, of course. Remy started to pick up speed in ways that I didn't think were possible for a dragon like him. That exercise must really be paying off for us right now. With my directions and Remy's speed, we were able to find the cave just as the rain started to pour. So we've got to hold up here for a bit and ride out the storm. Remy quickly descended to the ground and entered the cave. I climbed off of Remy's back with even less elegance than I did before, but Remy didn't seem to mind this time. Just as we started to unwind, the rain fell from the clouds once more, with a light wind following soon afterwards. Looks like we made it just in time. Well, at least I don't have to worry about going around in wet clothes. That's also a good thing, I suppose. Still, it's a bit inconvenient now that we're trapped here in the cave. I think that we might have to stay here for the night. So, what are we going to do now? I think that we should just relax for a bit. I'm still a bit tired of flying that far with you after all. That's a fair point. My legs are feeling a bit weird now too. I understand. Do you mind if I, uh... Not at all. Remy laid down on the ground next to me and snuggled tightly. Remy was strangely warm to the touch, despite having flown in the cold weather for quite some time. Comfortable? With you here, more than just comfortable. We relaxed in silence for some time before Remy started to talk again. Can I confess something to you? Any time. I thought a lot about what you said, and I realised something really important. I've gone through so much, and yet, I'm still here. And it's all thanks to you. No need to thank me, Remy. I'm serious, I don't think that I'd be here today without you. I can't even imagine what would have happened to me if you went through the portal. Sure, you must have felt horrible abandoning everybody you cared about, but at least there's hope for them in another timeline. Now that we're here, and with Logan and Martin too, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that there truly is hope left in this world. You just need someone to help you find it. I'm honestly flattered. I'm happy that I could have helped you realise that, Remy. To be honest with you, I don't think I'll ever move past what happened to Amelia, or with everybody I let down. But as long as you're here, everything will be alright. I feel the same way, let's hope for a better future together. Or just a hug. Uh, go for the hug. I lifted my arms and wrapped them around Remy in a tight hug. Remy seemed slightly surprised at first, but soon enveloped me with his large wings. Thanks, your kindness is too much for words. Don't worry about it. Remy suddenly removed his tire and looked at me with a shy grin in an almost familiar way, immediately describing his intentions. Oh, okay. Wants a bit of that romance. Kiss or look away. <laughs> Alright, do it. I moved closer to Remy and welcomed his warm embrace, and soon we were kissing, just like we had done before the huge fireworks, albeit without the lingering threat of Reza. We parted soon after, with Remy having a great smile on his face. Consider that as a thank you. For everything. Happy I could have helped. In any case, why did you have to remove the tyre? Let's just say that I did it for nostalgic reasons. Remy seemed to think for some time while he lay next to me. Afterwards, he let out a small yawn. I think that we should get some sleep, especially if we want to get back home undetected. 
That'd be for the better. It's pretty late now, so I'd say that we should get a few hours of sleep before we wake up again, and hopefully the storm should be gone by then. Do you want to sleep under my wind by any chance? I don't really think that you'll have a comfortable experience sleeping on the ground without any scales. I'd be honoured. I laid down next to Remy and tried to make myself comfortable. It didn't take long, however, for me to start drifting off to sleep. I said we're going to ride out this storm. I hope you sleep well. You too. With the last few seconds I spent awake, I could see Remy smiling next to me. For a character that's had such awful history, it's glad that he had a good time. Victory against Remy detected. Now initialising secret extension. A few hours passed before I woke up again. Luckily, it seemed that the storm had mostly calmed down to the point where we could travel without getting wet. I woke up Remy to let him know that we should get back home before the sun rises. Hey, is it time already? Pretty much. The storm has mostly calmed down, with the exception of a little wind, so we should get going now before morning hits. I see. Remy spent several minutes trying to gather his thoughts. Eventually, he was awake enough to travel. Just like at the city gates, Remy lowered his body for me to climb onto his back. This time, however, I managed to get on with less struggle than before. Looks like you're getting the hang of this. I think it's just one of those things that you just need to practice over and over again before you get used to it. Maybe. Ready to go? Sure, let's do it. Remy took a few steps back and took off into the skies. Once again, I enjoyed the cool breeze that came with flying while Remy soared through the air. Off we go. Swoop. This time, Remy wasted no time in getting to the city as fast as possible, as he flew a direct course to my house at astonishing speeds. Soon, we landed at the city gate. I climbed off of Remy, with him taking deep breaths after flying for such a far distance at such speeds. That was a sprint. After letting Remy catch his breath, we started to walk back to my house. Wait, c can you hear that? I tried to listen for any unusual noises, but couldn't hear anything. Sorry, I, I don't hear anything. Sounds familiar, but I can't exactly remember from where. And it seems to be coming from Logan's house as well. Should I go check it out then? I think it would be for the better, as if it has something to do with Logan, then you're far more suited to handle the situation. I understand. In that case, I'll meet you back at the house. Okay, good luck. I started to walk to Logan's house while Remy continued his path to my house. As I got closer and closer, I could hear some noises coming from inside Logan's place. What's he up to? Eventually, I could distinctly make out what those noises were as I reached Logan's front door. Luckily for me, it seemed to be unlocked. What's going on? After some looking around, I found Logan busy with his repaired television. His hearing was far better than mine, however, and immediately turned the television off when he heard my footsteps into the room. Oh, what on earth are you doing here at this time? I heard some noises and decided I should investigate. Well, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. All I did was, uh... Um... Hmm... Uh, fix some old speakers and test them out! And with what did you test them out on? Uh... The radio, of course, yes. So you're telling me that you managed to catch a non-existent radio signal late at night and decided that you should broadcast it to the surrounding area. Well... Uh, <laughs> I'm not good at lying, am I? Alright, I played some video games and decided to put the audio output extra loud. Surprisingly, this has apparent consequences. Please don't go and share this information with anybody. I'd hate to hide the fact that I'm procrastinating on work by playing video games. Okay, on one condition. You have to win a single match against me. This ought to be quite the challenge then. I'm in. So maybe the guy has hit a bit of a mental block, he just needed a break. You'll find me much harder to beat than Remy, since I can actually use a controller properly. Your funeral, dude. Yeah, talk about hubris. But enough talking, let's start. Bring it. So we're gonna play. Can I beat the guy? 
Oh, and that's the end. That's the end of the mod. I think that might have been ending A, which is the best ending the mod has to offer. Ending achieved. Extended A. Acquiring new help. Or the secret ending for short. Congratulations, you have seen the best possible ending in The Last Dragon, as well as the secret extension. Looks like randomness has favoured you. Feel free to try and get another ending, or just savour the moment. Alright then, we were able to get ending A, which is the best ending, but you know what I'm like. I want to check out these other endings. I think there are five in all, so we're going to try and work these out. I've got a little guide if I get stuck, but the most obvious decision that you can make is whether you want Martin and his friends to stay or not. Or, I could say no, and that's definitely going to change how things work, right? Okay, we got too much to lose to risk it all now. We are not going to welcome these guys who have travelled all the way through the desert to come and stay with us. We're going to stay with just us three. Get out! You're right, Logan. We have far too much to lose, so we can't risk letting Martin and his group inside our city walls. It's not something I'm comfortable with, but if we have any choice to survive, then we need to protect what little we have left. I'm glad you understand my train of thought. Okay, I understand. I really just wanted to try and help them, that's all. However, if you feel that this is the best option for us all, so be it. I'll wait here until you come back. Bad time, me and Logan went to Martin to share the news. As we approached, I saw Martin talking with some of the members of his group, and when he saw us, his face visibly brightened. Oh, you're back. So, have you come to a conclusion? Yeah, we have, and sadly, we're not letting you into the city, as we simply don't trust you enough with what little we have left. You're also way too big of a risk to invest in, especially if you're running away from actual raiders that might attack us at any time. Wait, wait, what? You're really going to reject us after everything we've been through? I'm sorry, Martin. It's just the way things are. We simply can't afford to have you in the city, especially with our limited resources. But where are we going to go? So many of us can't go on much further before we start to collapse from exhaustion. Please, you have to understand. If we don't take refuge here, then we're certain to meet the same fate that our city has. I beg of you, please show mercy. Martin fell to his knees with a desperate expression on his face. Logan, however, pointed his submachine gun directly at Martin. I've had more than enough of this. If you don't leave within the next 30 minutes, then I'll give you the mercy you desperately want. And don't you dare think I'm bluffing. Oh my god. Ah, Logan gave a few warning shots as if to prove a point. Everybody in the area suddenly had an alarmed expression on their face. I'll be going now then. I apologise for bothering you. Damn, that's harsh. That is so harsh. Martin quickly spread the news around the group. Soon, everybody was back on their motorcycles, with a few running away on foot. Logan then looked at me, with a satisfied expression on his face. And that takes care of that then. Good riddance. Wow, did you really have to be that harsh? Look, this world is extremely harsh to anybody still brave enough to live in it. If they've managed to survive this long in the desert, I'm sure they'll be able to survive a bit longer. But they no buts, they will survive. End of discussion. Now, here's our next move. Considering that they were being chased by raiders for basically half their journey, I think it would be best if we keep guard for the rest of the day. Raiders might suddenly appear at any time looking for their scent. It's best if we spend some time making sure we aren't ambushed by doing some preparations first. Okay, I'll go tell Remy. Oh man. I went back into the inside of the city gate to look for Remy, only for him to not be where he previously was. After a while, I found him in a secluded corner near one of the guard towers with an expression of deep thought and mild stress on his face. There you are. Why are you all the way out here? I wanted to get away as soon as Logan started shooting his gun. Even after Reza, I'm still not used to the loud noises those things can make. It always seems to make me nervous. Makes sense. In humans, hearing a gunshot can cause serious hearing problems if you're overexposed to them or aren't wearing protective gear. Also, you don't want to get shot. Still, you should have at least let me know where you went. I know, it's just that I didn't want to see the reaction of all the people that we chased away. You know, yeah, I think it's better if you didn't see that. We exchanged a small smile with each other before talking again. 
Logan's asked us to patrol the area for a while. He feels that since the group were being chased by raiders, we might be in some danger for some time. That's kind of smart of him, to be honest. I suppose that we should start as soon as we can, right? I mean, I guess. Okay then, I'll see if anybody's approaching us while I'm flying around. Got it, I'll walk around the city walls and keep guard from here. If you see anything strange, then let either me or Logan know as soon as possible. Will do. Remy took to the skies once more, making wide circles around the city. I went outside, keeping watch for any potential intruders, while Logan kept watch on one of the guard towers. I mean, if there are raiders, you'd think that they would see the guys leaving and they'd just go back after them again. That's my hope. That's what I'm hoping. As we send Martin and that to their fate, hopefully they can kind of take the danger with them. <laughs> Gonna be harsh, we might as well follow through. A few hours passed before it started to get dark. I decided that it would be best if I went home now, as the chance of any raiders suddenly appearing here is highly unlikely. When I approached Logan to let him know, I found him deep asleep. So much for keeping guard. Seeing that I entered the city, Remy swiftly flew down to my location. I could see that he was extremely tired from the day's work. Oh man, so tired. Did you see anybody out there, by any chance? I mean, I can't say I did. You? Neither did I. Wait, where's Logan? He fell asleep in one of the guard towers. It doesn't look like he'll get up anytime soon either. Shouldn't he wake him up then? After all, it would be far safer for him to sleep in his own bed than out in a guard tower. Yeah, it would. However, Logan's the type of person that if you wake up, all heck is going to break loose. It's probably safer for us to leave him be. Ah, oh, see. Back home. It's a bad time though. Me and Remy arrived back home, tired from everything that happened today. I started to cook some dinner for us, while Remy made himself comfortable on the floor. This is what we've done before, so this is all fine. It's all good. So, L Logan's calling us out for oversleeping, but, well, no need to call us out like that, douchebag. Wait, were you referring to the slacking part, or the matchmaking part? I'll let you figure that bit out on your own. Aha. That's awkward. Anyways, the plan is simple for today. All three of us are going to the water treatment plant, so that we can start with our repairs, since we only did some rough scouting yesterday. Any objections? I'm all ready, all set, none none, all good. In that case, we'll begin immediately. Can we just wait a while? I still need to get my bearings. You had all morning to get your bearings, Remy. If it's like 8 o'clock in the morning, it's it's still very early, you know. It's best that we don't waste any more time than is necessary. I understand. Now, let's get going, shall we? Logan, you're a bit of a douchebag sometimes, must be said. The three of us left my house, with Remy being last to exit. It's just the three of us, we're going to try and do the repairs. Without the entire squad, we sent them away, it feels bad. And it's a long walk through town. We went through the streets in silence, causing me to wonder what Logan was scheming this time. I looked at Remy, but it didn't seem like he wanted to talk. And eventually, Logan broke the silence. We won't need to make a stop at my place. I already made some preparations. Luckily, I had a spare wheelbarrow to haul all the extra electronics around. Since when did you have a wheelbarrow? Last I checked, you weren't really the gardening type? That question can be easily answered. I'm not. Okay. So I simply borrowed it from one of the military camps. Borrowed. Borrowed. I can see what you did. Uh, are you stealing? Could you ask for permission? I mean, there's no one here, so it's fine. Um, it's unusual of you to make a pun. Hey, I had to, okay? I know that I hate puns with every fibre of my being, but even I had to take that opportunity. Alright, just be careful with any given opportunity. We wouldn't want to start soiling the mood now, would we? Wow. That's terrible. Damn it. <laughs> we continued to walk in the middle of the roads for some time, and eventually we reached the water treatment plant. Unsurprisingly, it looked exactly the same since we left it. Okay, we're here. We've got a lot of work to do, so let's make this quick. I devised a plan last night based on what we found here yesterday. I checked the building materials you found. All I can say is that it won't be enough to fully repair the plant. However, they should cover most of the basic damage, and maybe some of the more severe degradation as well. Did you find anything that could help us repair the water purifiers? Sadly, no. 
Like I said, however, I think that they only need some power and a few minor repairs to get up and running again. I assume that you'll be going to the purifiers to get them up and running again, correct? You assume correctly. As for you two, I recommend that you guys prescribe a healthy dose of repairs to a nearby ruined building. I brought some spare tools that might be useful, as well as moving all the supplies closer to the entrance for your convenience. Got it. Good luck out there. No need for luck, only effort and time. Okay. Be like that. <laughs> Me and Remy entered the water treatment plant, wary of any other accidents that might happen this time. And after looking around for a while, we found all the tools that Logan left us, as well as all the supplies that I found. Looks like Logan already sorted everything out for us. It's nice of him. It does make me wonder though, when did Logan have the time to do all this? Surely he doesn't prepare everything that early in the morning. Uh, I wonder as well sometimes. Wait, you do? Of course, for as long as I've known him, Logan always tended to keep to himself. Especially when it comes to bad habits like his sleeping schedule. To be honest, it's a miracle how I ever found that out. Well, how did you find out? In a nutshell, I heard of many things, saw fewer, and witnessed less. I'm a bit confused as to what you just said. Could you clarify? I heard some rumours about Logan once and trying to investigate, which ended up with me finding out that his sleep schedule is next to non-existent. Oh, that makes more sense. You're welcome. In any case, we should probably get to work. I'll start with mixing the cement. Do you think that you'll be able to get some water for me? I can try, that is, if you have an idea as to where I can get some water. There's an area with water tanks just outside of the fire exits that you can get some clean water from. Luckily, Logan has already provided us with suitable buckets for perfect water scooping, so you could just use those. The water tanks shouldn't be hard to miss, as it's close to some of the only greenery in the entire city. Okay, I might be gone for a while, as carrying water without spilling it might be a bit too tricky for me. I'll try and be quick though. Remy carried two buckets in his mouth and left the room. I waited for some time until he came back, slowly putting the filled water buckets on the floor. I'm back. Hopefully I didn't take too long. Nah, not at all. Now, we can finally start with the repairs. But out of curiosity, have you ever done something like this before? I mean, I can't say I have, no. Looks like you'll get to experience something new then. I explained to Remy how to mix cement so that it can be used for reconstruction. I also explained how you should use the cement with the bricks to patch the walls. I think I get it. Should I mix the cement or try to repair the broken walls? It seems that you have far more experience in construction than me, so I'd like to hear your opinion. Um, Probably patching the holes, because if you get your mix wrong, the cement is not going to be good. Uh, go, go patch holes. How, how so? Well, since we don't have a cement mixer with us, we'll have to do everything by hand. I figured that you might have a bit of a hard time trying to get everything consistent enough, so having you patch up the holes seems like the better choice. Well, I guess you're right. It would be a bit tricky for me to try and get everything mixed enough. Do you think that you'll be comfortable with all this? Well, I haven't got much of a choice really. I'll just have to try and help in any way I can. I understand. Oh, and for the reference, I do not have experience with construction work. I have a degree in biology, not engineering. All I did was pick up a few things, back when I was trying to keep myself afloat. Oh, my apologies. I just assumed that you'd know a lot about these things. Don't worry about it. Now, let's get started, shall we? Okay, let's do it. I waited a bit for Remy to start mixing the cement before I started. At first I could see him struggling, but soon he adapted, mixing the cement at a fairly even and fast pace. At least for a dragon like Remy. I attempted to spread the cement evenly on the bricks. However, my attempts weren't without some complications, as some chunks of powder still remained after the mixing. That's why I told him to do the spreading and I would do the mixing, never mind. Maybe you should try mixing it like this. Yeah, that looks a bit better, thanks. Afterwards, the cement was consistent enough for constant use, and soon the entire wall was repaired. I don't think that I can feel my arms anymore though. Don't worry, you did a great job. Now for the rest. What? What? Suddenly, I heard a large explosion from deeper within the building, as well as the sound of something collapsing. This was also followed by some loud swearing. Should we, uh, yeah, yeah, we should. Let's go take a look. Was that Logan? Oh man, what happened? Me and Remy proceeded to go to the source of the noise, 
looking to see what part of the plant collapsed this time. Eventually we found Logan, who looked extremely distraught. This damp building will be my sarcophagus one day, I swear it. What happened to you? You look like you've seen a ghost. Might as well be a ghost, Remy. Another part of the building collapsed, but this time onto one of the purifiers. And the worst part, the generator I used caused this, since the purifier I've been working on turns out couldn't handle the power supply. It's a real shame as well, I can't even retrieve the parts, or salvage the purifier and generator for scraps. Heck, I probably don't even have enough parts left to fully repair all the purifiers, let alone everything else in this damn city, since the rubble has also crashed onto a nearby heap of spare parts. I guess that I could try and salvage some, but I doubt anything would be working now. Fate truly does have a sick, demented mind. At least you're safe? You should have been more careful. How can we fix it? Uh, at least you're safe for now. What does it even matter though? It's either that I died here under the rubble, or I die later when we run out of clean water. Don't think like that when there's still some hope left. After all, you've still got some spare parts, as well as the other purifiers. Sure, we might only have two generators left, but it's still manageable. Not if there aren't any usable parts left that are compatible with the purifiers, or if the last generators also blow up. Just more monotonous work for later, I guess. Okay, is there anything we can do to help out now? Not that I can think of. I'll have to try and think about what our next plans are. Regardless, I think you two should continue a what an abnormally large gust of wind interrupted Logan. Logan started to look extremely frustrated and confused at the same time. What is it now? Uh, I've got no idea. I could go and check outside if you want. Screw it, I'm going with you. Might as well see how much the universe hates me now. Should I? You don't even need to ask. Okay, let's, let's all go outside. Wasn't there a storm? The three of us went outside to the water treatment plant grounds to see what was causing the sudden intense wind. The question was soon answered when we looked at the skies, however. A storm was approaching. Yeah, this is what happens when you don't have friends. You've got less eyes to keep an eye on things. So that means you have bad things happen to you. Oh no. You can't be serious. Wait, why is there a storm here? How could there be a storm here? How the heck should I know? Nothing here makes even any sense anymore. Last I checked, storms, especially of that size, didn't just casually wander into the desert unnoticed. Damn it all. I don't think that this building would survive the winds or rain, even more hard work, just wasted. Despite Logan's ranting, he appeared to be deep in thought. Soon, however, he did what he always did best. He came up with a plan. The rain caused by this storm will definitely damage a lot of the infrastructure here in the city, considering that most buildings here are very much not waterproof. To try and fix all of them at this time is a fool's errand, so here's what we're going to do. I'll be off trying to minimise potential damage to the purifiers and anything else that might endanger them. Remy, can you fly close to the storm and give an approximation of the potential damage that we're going to face? I mean, I think so. I never fly when a storm's this close, but I should be able to make an educated guess on where the storm's heading, as well as the potential damages the rain and wind might cause. Considering that we don't have a weather specialist, you'll have to do. Which leaves us, what are we going to do? Despite the huge pit we landed in right now, there's some opportunity to be had. I want you to open the valves for the water tanks, so that any spare water that might flow will end up in them. If this place is going to get flooded, then you best be sure that clean water would be essential. Just make sure not to open the valves that already contain purified water though. Don't want excess muck to mix with that oh so precious disease free water. Got it. Anything else? Nothing. Just go. Oh, we got our plan. Remy quickly took off to the skies, while Logan went back inside. I rushed to the area that had the water tanks. I could see that there were entire sections with water tanks, with each their own individual pumps. Upon looking around, I eventually saw a wall with numerous valves, each being coloured to indicate what tanks they were connected to. It was nothing. I mustered all the strength I could and turned the valves, with each one somehow being tighter than the next. Come on, move, budge! With enough effort, however, the valves that opened the pipes to the empty and partially clean water tanks were open, I then opened the corresponding valves on the water tanks themselves, so that water could actually flow inside. After some time, all the water tanks were now ready to receive rainwater. How did Remy even get the water for the cement in the first place when all the valves are so tired? Remy's a strong boy. 
There's your answer. Back to the factory. I rush back inside the water treatment plant to report to Logan about the success of my task. However, when I found him, he was already busy talking to Remy. I'd admit, that's quite the relief. Still, nothing to be relaxed about, but that should give us the hope we need. Do take though that I could be wrong. After all, it's an educated guess. An educated guess is way better than nothing and I'm thankful for it. I assume that Remy's got the good news. Oh hey, I didn't see you come in. Yeah, I do have some good news. It looks like the storm will just barely hit us, with the heaviest blows not even reaching the city. If I had to guess, we should still be safe. For the most part. Even then, we can't let our guard down, especially with that ever-looming threat of raiders potentially succumbing here. In any case, I could see that you two are exhausted. Take the rest of the evening off, and try and waterproof anything you can. I don't think that there's really much to waterproof at my house, except for maybe some broken appliances. Lucky you then. I'll just stay here and continue to minimise the potential damage. You can never be too sure after all. But shouldn't you? No, no, this is far more important. And no, I won't accept your help now. Spend the last few minutes, or however much we have left before the storm hits on yourselves. What about you? Where are you going to go before the storm hits? I'll either stay here, or try to go home in the rain and wind. Now, you're just going to waste your precious time by staying here. Oh, thanks Logan. Don't mention it. Seriously, don't mention it. Okay. <laughs> we got sent away. Back at home before the storm hits. Me and Remy hurried back home. Luckily for us, the first raindrops started to fall just as we closed the door. Soon we could hear the rain starting to pour down. Looks like we made it just in time. I'm pretty sure that you wouldn't appreciate walking around in soggy clothes, especially with this weather. You'd probably even catch a cold. Okay, we, ha we had this conversation before, so that's fine. But we're still together, we're still, we're still hanging in there, we're going through these options, I'm trying to pick the same ones as before. What does it matter? Why would you voluntarily want me dragging you down? Because you mean so much to me, and I think it's a similar case with Logan as well. You're doing so many great things helping everybody, even if you don't realise it. But it's not going to bring everyone back. Man, you're a downer. Remember the people that we recently chased away? Yeah, I do. What about them? They're probably dead now. And it's my fault. I could have saved them, but instead I sent them all to their graves. No, no. We, we all made that decision, and Remy was the only person who didn't. So, even after everything I realised about myself, I still continue to make the same mistakes, with others having to pay the price for it. Okay, how do you know they're dead? At this rate, you'll cause the extinction of two races, and there's still hope. Uh, there's still hope. They'll get that rainwater. That'll help. Can't be. You said yourself that there weren't any cities left in the area. But they could always join one of the mobile groups. And potentially find the raiders they're trying to run away from. It just wouldn't end well for them. But we can always hope. I guess it's all we can do now. Even if it doesn't matter in the end. Although, maybe there's still a way to fix my mistakes. Maybe there's even a chance that I could see. What are you talking about? Wait, don't tell me. The portal? That strange person did mention that it could be used for time travel. So he's thinking about travelling back and we tell him it's kind of like not, not a bad idea. It's not worth the risk. Don't make such a rash decision. We don't know what the consequences would be if you're to go back in time. The risk is far too great. I gotta at least try though. I know, the thing is... We don't know what would happen if you're to arrive at the other side. If I had to guess, meeting yourself could probably cause a time paradox if you're not careful enough. Maybe something even worse entirely. So even that's a lost hope. It's a sucky time. Can I ask you an unusual question? What would you do if I suddenly disappeared? Yep, yeah, I'd look for you. I see. Why would you ask such a question, if I may ask? I can't tell you. Not now. Okay then. Still, there's one thing left to tell you now. Thanks. No need to thank me, I'm always available to help. I know, it just feels so weird to know that somebody cares about me enough to listen to what I have to say. I haven't had somebody like that since Amelia. Yep, 
Yeah, Amelia. Don't worry, it's okay, I'm here for you. Always. I truly don't deserve any kindness from you. Trash like me shouldn't receive even emotionless wishes. You're not trash. You're the most valuable person I know and don't you dare forget it. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but thank you. Trudy. It's fine. Remember, I'm always there to talk to if you need any help. I'll remember that. Remy gave a large yawn, with me following shortly after. I looked at the time and saw that it was quite late into the night. Well, it seems that it has gotten quite late. I think we should get ready for bed. Do you want to sleep? Yeah, let's sleep together. Follow me. We both prepared for bed while we continued to talk to each other, and after we were finished, I climbed into my bed with Remy climbing in after me. Remy, however, started to hug me as soon as he got comfortable in the bed, putting me closer to him. He gave me a small kiss afterward. Good night. Good night. Do try and have a good night's rest. I'll try. Just before I drifted to sleep, I felt something wet rolling down on my hair. A tear. Oh, Remy is super, super sad and super depressed. I mean, I don't really blame him. It is a rough time. I woke up a few hours later, with the sounds of heavy rain and wind keeping me awake. I wondered for a while whether Logan would be okay, and if he managed to get home before the storm hit us. After struggling to fall asleep again, I decided to wander around the house, waiting for the opportunity to feel tired again. However, when they reached the living room, Remy wasn't sleeping on the couch. Wait, where'd Remy go? I looked around to see if I could find him, but he's nowhere to be found, and that's when I noticed a crucial detail. The front door was slightly open. A sense of panic washed over me as I wondered where Remy could have gone. I spent several minutes trying to think of any possibilities until I found the most likely solution. The portal. He's gonna try it. It made sense. Remy felt a hefty sense of guilt, so it was only logical that he tried to make things right by trying to go back in time, despite my attempted warnings of what might happen. Regardless, there was only one thing that needed to be done. I gotta go to the portal and try and prevent Remy from going back in time. I rushed outside into the rain, hoping to arrive at the portal before it's too late. I could feel the large raindrops hitting my body as I ran as fast as I could while my clothes started to get heavier and heavier. It wasn't long before I reached the portal. With tired legs, I looked around for any trace of Remy, but none could be found. Well, he's already gone. It seems that I was too late. Remy's gone back in time. I decided to look at the logs to confirm whether he actually used the portal, however, as making rash conclusions can only cause problems if I happen to be wrong. However, upon inspecting the logs, I didn't find anything that showed the portal being used. Only a failed attempt to activate it roughly 50 minutes ago. He tried. He tried it. He didn't manage to go back in time, but why? What prevented him from doing so? Ultimately, I decided that going to Logan would be my best option to find Remy. So he tried to do it, or he changed his mind. It took quite some time, but eventually I reached Logan's house. I knocked as loud as I could, hoping that Logan would still be awake at this hour. Dude. Dude, wake up. Unsurprisingly, he was. What the heck are you doing here? Why are you soaked in your pyjamas? I'll explain later. Let's just get inside for now. I don't want to be in the rain for any more than's necessary. Fine, come in. Okay, explain yourself. Oh man, and to think that I almost got a decent night's sleep. Remy's missing. What? What do you mean he's missing? Well, he wasn't at home. I noticed that the door was open, which led me to believe that he wandered around the city despite the heavy rains and wind. I figured that maybe Remy went to the portal, and I was right. Sort of. According to the logs, he tried to use the portal almost an hour ago, but for some reason it didn't activate. I went directly to you to let you know so that we could figure something out. Logan seemed to grumble something under his breath, and then he tried to think about the information I gave him. Why would Remy want to use the portal though? From what I know about him, he doesn't seem to be the type to try and go back to his world, especially after everything's been destroyed. It's kind of complicated, 
One that would take too long to explain now. So be it. Hmm. I'm at a complete loss. Really, I am. I don't know him as well as you do, so any behaviours that he might have had that could have influenced him in some way are lost to me. You're essentially the best lead we have. The only recommendation I could give is to search the city. Perhaps he could just be at the water treatment plant to try and look for something. It's just a wild guess though. The fact that he went to the portal, however, just throws a spanner in the works. Can you help me look? Well, since you already ruined my opportunity for some good sleep, I might as well try to help you out. You'll have to ride with me on my motorcycle though. The faster we reach our destination, the better the odds at finding something that could help us find Remy. Okay. Where's he gone? We climbed on Bloden's motorcycle and drove as fast as we could to the water treatment plant. Much to my dismay, Logan only had a single helmet, which caused me to be constantly bombarded by raindrops in my eyes. We did reach our destination at a relatively fast pace, even if I felt like I'd soaked up all of the storm's rain. Okay, I'm going to check the inner parts of the water treatment plant. You can check the outer parts, as well as all of the entrances. I'll shout if I find anything. Okay, I'll do the same. Good luck. Again with the luck, damn it. I was just trying to annoy me, because you certainly got that going for you. Oh, fine. I really need to get some more sleep. He's all grouchy, get that sleep. I started looking for anything that might indicate Remy's whereabouts, but the darkness hindered my progress. Try calling out, I don't know. As I wandered through the building, I could see that most of the infrastructure still survived the storm thus far, but whether they'll still be here tomorrow morning remains to be seen. After searching for what felt like hours, I started to lose hope of finding Remy here, but suddenly, I heard a distant voice coming from the central facility. Over here! What was he found? I ran through the halls until I saw Logan. He looked far more distraught than I would have expected, having an almost melancholic expression on his face. So I didn't find Remy here like I suspected, however, I found something far worse. What did you find? I think this is meant for you. Logan handed me a small note while avoiding my eyes. I don't have anything to say, it's just that. Fucking hell, I feel sorry for the poor guy. I just hope he's alright, wherever he might be. I opened the note and started to read. The barely legible handwriting with almost no light made the note extremely hard to read, but I somehow managed to make out what it said. By the time you found this note, I'll be long gone. I know that this is sudden, but I can't just continue to drag you all down. If I stay here any longer, then I'm going to be the reason that the city will fall. All the hard work you and Logan put in so far is something that amazes me. I can only imagine all the progress that both of you will be able to make if this useless dragon stopped getting in the way. All I ever do is make everything worse. Dude, you got no basis for this. You got a lot of potential, man. As a leader, as an ambassador, and as a close friend. It would be better for us all if I left. Mind you, this isn't something I want to do, especially after everything you did for me. However, the things I've done and will most likely keep doing are more than enough reasons for me to be kicked out of the city. I wish you and Logan the best of luck. Hopefully, one day, you'll be able to find somebody actually useful to help you out instead of dragging you down and getting in the way like me. I hope that you can forgive me for the way I've repaid your kindness. Goodbye. I'll miss you. Remy. He's left. He, he, he's just run away. He's gone. Are you okay? No offence, but you look horrible. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Then we're experiencing the same emotions right now. I didn't think that I could ever feel sad for someone I've barely known for a few days, but here I am. Let's just hope that Remy's better off now. I don't think you're helping. I know, helping people with emotional problems isn't really my specialty. In any case, I think we've had enough for tonight. Let's leave this for tomorrow, and see what we can come up with. And for now, come with me. I'll take you to your home. Remy, where'd you go? Oh man. That's it! That's it, he just went! Ah!
we have achieved ending D, detriment to all. Or well, ending D for short. You've now seen the last dragon's bad ending. Let's hope that Rem is safe. Okay, we're going to try and get another ending in the next episode. This is Usho signing off, and hopefully I'll see you next time, and hopefully you're not too sad. I'll see you then.